Regarding the arm and the positions the arm can be put in with the body cushion, we of course see the arm in the sphinx position. This is ideal for neutralizing any imposition of force on the rotator cuff, the shoulder joint. We can have the arm off the table. In that position, there's a slight inclination of distraction of the joint. We can have the arm down alongside. And this is a marvelous position that opens up the low back. I'll move uh, both arms in this case out. You can see how the scapulae move away from the spine. So it spreads the posterior aspect of the pectoral girdle, which allows us easy access under the axillary border of the scapula. So that's a wonderful access. So this positioning possibility, having the arm in this position, predisposes good access to the triceps, also allowing the stretch of the rhomboids, rhomboidus minor. It's just a really, really nice release for the upper back as well. When we want to position the arm more in the same plane as is the body, then we add the use of armrests. And these armrests are easily added. They slide simply right between the body cushion and the tabletop. And they afford us a variety of positionings. We can have the arm off the edge in this way, idealizes working the arm in this way, well supported. We can have the arm up. Notice I'm just sliding that, that up. In this case, we're idealizing positioning for release and access to deltoid. It just lets us completely address working this whole pectoral girdle. In my palpation work, I like to use a little emollient, a little bit of lotion, not much, but just enough to enhance my sense of touch. A positioning possibility for the lower extremities is being able to have one ankle elevated and the other leg straight. So in this way, I have the foot off the table and I can use the tabletop uh, for compressive forces, applying a little bit of pressure, in this case, to the calf muscles or right up into the, the hamstrings as well. So the split leg support affords a lot of different positioning possibilities that can really help you in the work and your approach to what you're doing. The split leg support of the body cushion can afford you a number of different ways to address working the individual lower extremities of your patient or client. One thing that you can do if you have to, for some reason, have to have the extremities balanced without any external rotation, you can simply use either the long rectangles or the large wedges and place them along the lateral aspect of each of the halves of the split leg support. In doing so, you can allow your patient, your client, restful repose, and yet you can align each of the extremities. This is especially useful in the case of bilaterally needling each uh, knee in the case of acupuncture. Another approach that uh, I suggest you note that can greatly benefit you is the ability of removing one half of the leg support. Working with one extremity extended, you still have the restful repose and comfort afforded by the body cushion and the other half of the leg support. In this case, you can work very readily along applying pressure on the table. You can have the leg off the table. You may wish to have the extremity supported in this way with the leg off the table. Really good way to approach active compression. We can have the positioning of the leg this way, you can move it out here and position in this way. So just want you to be aware that there are all of these positioning possibilities available to you. That's the purpose of this video. Once you've seen these things, you take mental note, you'll be better able to apply some of these things very beneficially in your approach to treatment. One of the very simple ways that I use this that I appreciate using it is to place it right underneath the thigh. What I'm doing is lifting the leg and placing 
the angled portion of one half of the leg support right up into the ischial tuberosity. And this can provide a really nice foundation of support for working compression on the quads. Another possibility is to position the knee in a 90. And in this case, we can have one uh, supported typically on the body cushion split leg half and the other one elevated in this way. Another possibility is to elevate both knees and in this case you can uh, alleviate any pressure on the low back and also predispose the abdomen very well to working deep into the abdomen, releasing and predisposing the musculature here very, very well for access, perhaps the psoas. Armrests can play an important role in establishing positioning and support for your arms when you're doing your craniosacral work. This allows your subject to be completely comfortable, idealized in their positioning, so much better than flat. And it's going to really enhance the effectiveness of that work. So here I have support for my forearms, my elbows, and uh, you'll appreciate this. This works quite well. Positioning your subject face up on the body cushion for reflexology really idealizes those approaches. Now you notice she's positioned on the table face up more toward the foot end of the table so that her feet are off the end of the table. In this case, I'm using the armrest to support her arms because I'm going to use the large wedges, in which case I also have these covered with elastic fitted cotton covers. And these two large wedges I'm going to place under her legs. And so what that's going to allow is a nice ease of support for her legs and it's going to present the feet just perfectly for me to be able to do my reflexology. The uh, other thing you might want to add, even though these do have the elastic uh, cotton fitted covers, is I'll just put a towel up here, okay? So you might want to want to do that. Or if you don't have the elastic fitted covers, you would certainly cover these and drape them with a towel or a sheet. The body cushion is used widely among spas for facial positioning, and this is how it's done. I have my spa guest on the body cushion face up. I'm going to add a large wedge because I want to have her upper torso elevated just a little bit more and more available to me for this work. I'll add the other large wedge, and I'm putting that right behind it, and then I'll add the long rectangle on top, and what this is going to do is elevate her upper torso a little bit more and so that she has appropriate support for her neck in a way that I can still access her face as I need to, I'm going to add this neck roll. So now she's positioned in a way that her upper torso is elevated, she has the armrest in place, she's very, very comfortable. And so whether I'm standing to apply this treatment or seated, uh, my, my guest is very, very comfortably supported for a facial. Here's a positioning possibility that you can put to work very effectively in the case of pelvic distortion. What I've done is added a large wedge under the ASIS on one side. Now this is compensatory positioning. So your client, your patient, your athlete can be in very comfortable repose here, lying face down on the body cushion. And on the other side, I've added a large wedge under the ribs. So all the while they're face down, you can see here we have an induced compensatory positioning situation. Likewise, if I want to apply it in the other way and rotate the pelvis the other way, we can simply take the large wedges and alternate the positioning. Now, this is more fully explored in the video series, New Approaches to Muscle Therapy. And so you'll want to take a look at that. There are many, many ways that you can apply the body cushion very effectively using gravity in an approach to treating your patients and clients.